Hello and welcome to TheAnology.net. Today's video is about packaging of DNA into a chromosome. In my previous video, I discussed the structure of the DNA. So just to quickly recall as to what we did last time, I can show you here, we talked about the structure of the DNA, which is a double helical structure. <clears throat> So this DNA exists inside the nucleus of the cell, but then not exactly the way it looks like over here, but then it is present in the form of a very intense meshwork, which is known as chromatin. So this is what it looks like once DNA is present inside the cell, chromatin material. Now the question is how this chromatin gets packed inside the nucleus of the cell. So this is the cell here contains a nucleus. The nucleus itself is a very, very, very tiny space inside the cell where this, where this entire chromatin has to get um, packed and, and fitted inside the nucleus. So in this video, we basically need to understand how this chromatin or how this genetic material gets packed inside the nucleus of the cell. In order to accomplish this process, there are different levels of folding where the first level of folding is known as the nucleosome model. So let me just write that down here. The nucleosome model. So in this model, the most important role is being played by um, a protein, which is known as the histone protein. So that is what the histone protein looks like over here. Okay, so this histone protein is also known as the DNA binding protein. Why this is known as the DNA binding protein? I'll just, I'll just give you the description for that. Let me write that down here for you first. DNA binding protein. Okay, so as the name suggests, this particular protein, the function of this protein is to uh, pack the DNA or is to bind uh, to the DNA which is present inside the cell. So assuming that this is the DNA and onto this histone protein, DNA gets wrapped around and then it exits. So DNA enters, it gets wrapped around the histone protein and then it leaves. Now such a structure where the histone protein um, wraps or binds to the DNA is known as the nucleosome model. So this is what the very first level of folding is or the packaging is. Now, there is huge quantity of chromatin which is present inside this cell. So quite obvious, just one histone protein is definitely not sufficient enough to bring about the entire packaging. So there are plenty and plenty of histone proteins present. Um, for our discussion's sake, let's assume there is one more um, next to the previous histone. Okay, something like this. So again, the DNA now enters the second histone protein, it wraps around the histone protein, and again, it exits. So there is DNA, there's actually two types of DNA, which we can see in this picture. Um, the quantity of DNA that gets wrapped around the histone protein, I'm talking about this one, is approximately 147 base pairs. So this is what the concentration of the DNA is, which is present immediately around the surface of the histone protein. But then we have another piece of DNA which is present between the two histone proteins, or I should say this is the DNA which rather connects the two histone proteins together. And for that matter, this is known as the linker DNA. Linker DNA, quite obvious. Um, linker DNA suggests that the DNA is just connecting the two histones together. So this linker DNA is approximately 20 to 60 base pairs in length. So the DNA which is present around the histone is 147 base pair versus the linker DNA which connects the two histone proteins together, which is approximately 20 to 60 uh, base pairs in length. So overall, this appears to be the nucleosome model. And if we look at the structure here for the nucleosome model, it appears that DNA is a string onto which we have these histone proteins which appear to be the beads present on the string. And for that matter, this entire nucleosome model is also referred to as beads on a string model. So beads on a string model where 
The string is the DNA and the beads are nothing but the histone proteins. So together, it's the beads on the string model. So before we go ahead on to the next level of the folding of the DNA, let me explain you in detail as to what is the nature of this histone protein. So let us draw this histone protein, maybe a zoomed in version. Okay, so this histone protein is not a very simple protein. It is rather made up of certain subunits of protein. So I can say one histone is equal to eight subproteins. And the fact that this histone protein is made up of eight subunits or eight tiny little proteins, this histone is also referred to as the octomer. Okay, so let us find out what these um, eight pieces of protein are. So here we have H2A, H2B, H3, and H4. Four. And of course, we have two copies of each of these, hence the total comes out to be the eight subprotein units. So together, all these eight units, they constitute one histone protein. So if you refer to this picture on the side here, um, so this yellow ball which appears here is our histone protein around which the DNA is wrapped around. So this is the DNA which is approximately, if you remember the number, over here, uh, 147 base pair, which is present around this histone protein, in fact, this his prote histone protein, and all the histone proteins throughout. Whereas this piece of DNA, which links the two histone unit together, is the linker DNA, and the length of this happens to be exactly, well, approximately 20 to 60 base pairs. So this appears to be the beaded structure where we have the string in the form of the DNA and the beads in the form of the histone proteins. And each of these histone proteins, they are made up of, as I just mentioned, these are made up of eight subunits where I have two units of H2A protein and two units of H2B protein, two units of H3 protein and two units of H4 protein together giving the structure which is histone octamer. Now, question over here uh, before we move on to the next level is we have numbers like 2, 3, and 4, but then just a thought, what happened to 1? Why is it that we don't have H1 involved anywhere in the picture? So definitely there is something known as H1 protein, but unfortunately H1 protein is not a part of the histone protein. H1 protein is rather present, if you look at the picture over here, if you see these connections, these ones are the H1 proteins. Now these H1 proteins, they link the DNA on the histone protein. Or we can say these are the proteins which make sure that the DNA gets sealed properly around the histone protein. So these are nothing but, we can say, um, the sealing proteins or, or they, they, are, they just basically connect. Um, the DNA around the histone protein. They establish a very firm contact between the DNA and the histone protein. So that is what the function of H1 protein is, which is excluded. Keep in mind, this is excluded from the structure of the histone protein. Histone only consists of H2A, H2B, H3, and H4. So this is about the very first level of um, DNA folding, which is the nucleosome model. On that note, let's move on to the next level of uh, DNA folding, which is our second level known as the solenoid model. Okay. Now, just to quickly uh, mention one thing over here, if we understand the first model, which is the nucleosome model, if we understand this in detail, there is nothing much um, complicated about the second level of folding, which is the solenoid model. So if we can go back to this picture, probably the whole thing will make sense to you. So this level here 
is the primary folding, which is our nucleosome model. So just for convenience sake, we can say this is one, or this is the very first level of folding where we have the histone proteins that bind on to the DNA, and that's how DNA gets wrapped around the histone proteins. Um, establishing the nucleosome model. The second level of folding is right over here, which is known as the solenoid model. So what you can notice here is, it's just that the primary folding gets further complicated, like it further wraps around uh, and gives a very complicated, intense structure, which is known as the solenoid model. So in a sense, I would say there is nothing really complicated about, in terms of the structure, nothing really complicated about the solenoid model, but then it's just the packaging which becomes slightly complicated. So it undergoes another round of folding, forming the secondary level of the DNA packaging, which is solenoid model. And in the tertiary level, which is the third round of DNA folding, what happens is, the DNA gets wrapped around into a structure which is known as the nuclear scaffolding. Okay, so again, I think I can explain you this with the help of the picture that we have here. So let's go back to it. So this is the secondary folding, which undergoes, again, rounds and rounds of complicated folding, which you can observe over here, talking about this phase, and that's the tertiary folding. So this one was secondary, which was the solenoid model. And then here we have the tertiary level of folding, which is known as the scaffolding. So this was, just to give you a quick, quick recap so far, this was the nucleosome model. Second one was the solenoid model. And then we have the third one, which is known as the nuclear scaffold model. And finally, with these three levels of packaging, our DNA is now ready to be called as the chromosome in the fourth round of folding. So finally, what we get over here is the structure, the ultimate structure, which is chromosome. So if you notice in this picture, we have the chromosomes, which are the quaternary level of folding, the chromosomes here. Okay. So let's quickly talk about the structure of the chromosome. So here, this is what the chromosome like it's pretty fat but I guess it's good enough to understand the structure of the chromosome so as we as we talked about the these levels of folding um, where we have the primary secondary and the tertiary level so finally this is what appears as as the final product and this is known as the chromosome so what you see over here is nothing but a very complicated rounds and rounds of folding where we have the primary, the secondary, the tertiary, and finally the quaternary structure of the chromosome, where these two are referred to as chromatids, and the remaining two on the other side, these are also referred to as chromatids. So this entire structure is what is known as the chromosome. So each chromosome will now have four chromatids. That's what our equation would be, four chromatids. And all of these chromatids are connected at the center exactly over here, which is known as the centromere. Now these terms, they kind of look alike uh, but still, like all of these terminologies, they have their own significant meaning. So make sure you don't get confused between what are chromatids, what is chromosome, what is centromere, so on and so forth. And these all terminologies will help you understand um, the, the processes like mitosis or meiosis, which is what our, what our next video is all about. So as of now, um, the structure which we get over here, the final product is our chromosome which consists of 
four chromatids connected to each other exactly at the center over here, which is known as the centromere. So this is what the final product is, and something like this is present inside the nucleus where we talked about the presence of the chromosome here inside the nucleus of the cell. So this is what exactly it looks like inside the nucleus of the cell. And all these different levels of folding, they are extremely efficient. They exactly package the DNA into the structure known as chromosome, which exists inside the nucleus of the cell. So I hope this video uh, was good enough to explain you the entire concept of the packaging of the DNA. Of course, there are so many other things to add on to it, but that we can probably do uh, in the next video. So as of now, this is what the structure of the DNA is, the packaging of the DNA is. We'll catch you next and in, in the next video on mitosis and meiosis. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.